All right. So I am Travis with Subsurface Solutions. And I have Scott Anderson on it. He's on this call as well. And I got Brent Briley with us uh, behind me here to uh, hit me in the back when I start to go too long. Um, Joe probably felt the same pressure here trying to get this presentation or 15 minutes is kind of hard. So it's, gonna, it's probably going to run a little long, but uh, um, I'll do the best I can. But we cover a nine state territory for radio detection. And I've been selling radio detection since uh, I think 1997. Before that, I was a contract locator. Used to work for Great Plains Locating Service, a manager there kind of, I was one of their first employees. And I actually worked with Randy, who's in charge of Vanguard. So we know each other pretty well, but uh, I'm gonna start with the history of locators and GPSing, and then uh, get into the simple forms of being able to map out your lines while you're locating and then the more advanced versions. And so the history basically, uh, for me at least, it goes back uh, to um, the RD400 that radio detection has. And so Alliance Pipeline actually came up to me <clears throat> back in 2004 and they needed to do a depth of cover centerline mapping survey on their new pipe they just installed across the Dakotas and then through Minnesota, you probably remember going across Minnesota and down to Chicago. And they needed to uh, um, get it done, come up with a workflow that would make it easier than chaining. If pipelines used to do everything by chaining measurements, all from centerliner roads, which is just ridiculous when you have GPS out there. And they knew that the Trimble unit had the capabilities of importing data and they knew the RD400 had the capabilities of exporting through an RS-232 port. And so uh, we were able to work with Frontier Precision back in the day and come up with a method for everything to work. And we did it using a TerraSync software from Trimble. And so the TerraSync would actually import the, uh, the um, at different attributes or allow us to put different parts of that data stream into attributes in that form. The problem with this, as you can see, it's very, very ugly. Um, you got a nice cable sticking out, the 232 cable, which has to use a, a proprietary bracket going underneath the Trimble unit and trying to walk through cornfields or trying to do just locates with this. It, it was really cumbersome. And if, if our brackets weren't very good looking either to hold everything. And it was expensive. You know, when you're using Trimble stuff, you're paying eight to $10,000 a piece for these GPS units and uh, using duct tape to put it all together, but it worked and it worked pretty well. It was fast and easy, um, a little um, heavy, uh, but, and we were able to push all that information to whatever attributes we wanted to assign to the GPS points that we were taking. And so we had different points in there for depths, exposure information, any kind of inventory we came across on the pipeline. And they, you know, we got the whole job done. In fact, Alliance Pipeline came back to me and said, hey, now we need to find a contractor to do this. Will you be willing to do it? I said, well, I can get some guys together to walk it for you. So we, from that point on, it kind of grew another business for me. And so we've been doing pipeline surveys on another, on another side of things. I've been involved with doing thousands of miles of pipeline surveys every year. And almost every transmission company hired us to walk their lines. And we used the same setup until, until radio detection kind of, and, and Tremble started getting their stuff updated. And so what happened throughout the years, of course, is the serial ports went away and Bluetooth came out. And so Bluetooth was a great invention to be able to transfer data over. And so uh, through the Bluetooth connection, radio detection would uh, start utilizing that not only as a way to transfer information over, but they installed a, uh, um, internally a GPS unit in the RD8000, and it's in 2009. And so the GPS in inside the unit is the most rudimentary way of, uh, of and easiest way probably of um, getting dots on the map and along with your located information like a depth reading. So the, the um, 8,000 will store up to 1,000. I think the newer one, the 8,200 will store a couple thousand, but you can store those points as you're moving along by pushing the survey cert button. You know, they do two things on their GPS. They actually have a log feature in their units that logs every second. It takes a GPS point along with everything that the locator's doing. So that, uh, they, they have a running history of where the guy located, what frequency he was used, and what the depth readings were. And you can download actually up to almost two years worth of data if you wanted to. So for damage prevention wise, if there was a, a, a damage you needed to investigate, you can see kind of do a CSI and figure out how the guy performed the locate and see what went wrong possibly. Uh, but for mapping purposes, you don't want to point every second. You want to point whenever the line deviates from its path or when you come across an attribute or something you need to log. And so it's capable of doing that 
uh, and you can download it then uh, use an RD manager and to a uh, and, and create an Excel file or a, uh, a Google Earth file. Uh, but it's uh, also you can run RD Maps app with it. So it came out with the Maps app, and the, uh, the RD Maps app is a free Android download. And that will talk to the locator. So at the same time, when you're pushing that button, you're not just saving locate information in the locator. You can also send it over to the Android app and save it on there. And it makes it a little bit easier because you can actually see the aerial photography, which is really important when you're out there mapping stuff. You want to make sure that where you're taking that point is matching up to the map. And so accuracy wise, it does help. It allows you to, uh, the user to understand that he's not putting crap in, you know, because that's what you're going to get out of it if you're not doing it correctly. And that's a free app. It, it runs really well. Um, you can share the information through an email or a cloud drive when you're done with it. And that's been out for quite a while. Um, the things um, that they added to that, I guess, I, I'll show you an example here. I got the video. Hopefully this turns out all right. This is how it works. So you start up the app on your Android device and uh, it's a little bit fuzzy, but I hopefully will clear up. So you hit new job and you start your new job and give it a name. And uh, depending on what you're locating or who you're working for or whatever, then you can put down your utility type. And so you can keep track of what type of uh, utility you're running on. And that will color code it correctly. And as soon as you start up, it hones in on your location there we are in front of the office here. And then we can go ahead and use it with an external device. In this case, instead of using the phone's GPS or the locator's GPS, we go more accurate and go with the geode. The geode unit is under a couple grand and it's a, been a really stable, great, accurate unit that usually gives us under six inch accuracy. It's not registered as that, but we get it almost over 95% of the time. We get a real, and it's easy to set up too. You just Bluetooth it together. So by hitting the survey cert button that's on the locator, you start dropping your dots, you start dropping your breadcrumbs and it will go ahead and transfer the data over to the app. And you can see the points showing up there on the left side as, uh, as Brent's using the unit there. And as he's walking, you know, you just decide where you wanna stop, get your depth to settle down. Once you see your depth display on the, uh, on the locator, you go ahead and push the survey cert button, add another dot. And, uh, and it just kind of also builds a line behind it. So. When you're all said and done and you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and stop your survey and uh, you can uh, export that information. So he's gonna take a couple more readings here and then we'll go ahead and export the information there. But you can see pretty simple, it frees up your left hand too. So we have this mount that we built that actually mounts the GPS. It has a couple of RAM mount heads. You can see they look like aliens there, but we just have a little fun with it there and we can mount whatever we want on the left or the right side. Some guys use tablets, some guys use phones. I like using like a six, a six inch phone because it gets it just right so you can see the aerial photography really well and uh, keeps the weight down as well. So when you're done with your survey, you hit stop survey and then you can go ahead and um, um, go back into the job folder and export it. It has the share button right there, pretty simple and then that will allow you to open it up into your email client or onto your Google Drive. So radio detection has now updated this in 2020 to RD Maps Plus. And so the things that you're gaining now is the capabilities of using this with iOS. And so they're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to use that same app in an iOS because a lot, a lot of companies, they're strictly iOS because of security reasons they say, but they're strictly iOS. So they've been wanting that for quite a while but you're still capable of com uh, being compatible with any GPS unit out there. So if they already got Trimble units, Arrow units, Geodes from Juniper, they can use it. Uh, but there is a direct NTRIP uh, RTK uh, from Trimble uh, catalyst that you can um, um, integrate with it. And so it allows you to put your NTRIP information directly into it, uh, communicate with a catalyst and get down to centimeter accuracy if that's what you want. The catalyst is kind of a nice option. It's on the left side right there. It's a really lightweight, uh, very accurate GPS unit that's only, I think it's around 350 bucks if I remember right. I just got the info on it the other day. And then you pay for their subscription service um, and to, to, for the accuracy that you want. And that sub subscription can just be a day if your job is only a day or a month or by the year, whatever you choose. And so it's a, a, a lot less expensive option to get into for guys that aren't going to be using this every day throughout the whole year. They just need to do it for a couple jobs here and there. And then it gives you a distance walk feature. They added that to it and allows you to shape file export now instead of just a CSV or a KML file export. 
and then it does automated uh, cloud-based storage. And so, and then they're going to start building this into get some API integration into it as well. So the data transferring, it will help a lot, you know, trying to just download information and get it onto your company maps has always been a problem. It, it, it's been a, uh, and, and trying to work in between the two. And they also added some distance walks features and the distance of the line that you walked as well. So the, let me talk about the cons that RD maps. So I'm, since I've been doing GPS mapping since 2004, I've always been, I know what I want and I was a locator too. And so I always wanted something to make the workflow just as easy as locating period. And so the things I don't like about a lot of what the locators come out with is there's no place to store attributes. Attributes are very important because when you're locating the line out, why not go ahead and collect, um, you know, that you're at a marker post, do a marker post inspection, do an ex exposure inspection. If you're at a, a gas line exposure, a damage prevention, any, anything, you, any attributes you want, it should be customizable. And so um, I also didn't like the fact that um, it wasn't synced up to a cloud, kind of like Esri Collector. I mean, you should be able to easily transfer data back and forth um, and everybody on the same page. So basically the guy at the desktop back in the office can see what the guy in the field is doing almost instantaneously. And then take photos when you're out there in the field, being able to take a photo of a valve site, do a valve inspection or somebody else, you know, take a photo of an exposure. Um, and then uh, uh, correct your readings in the field, just uh, maybe move a reading or delete a reading or redo a reading. And, and customize how you want things to work. So uh, well, it's been about three or four years ago, we started developing our own app. We actually came up with um, an advanced version of, of what we were really after, and that's called Subsurface Maps. And it's a mapping portal, so it's not just an app. It's a whole complete GIS mapping portal uh, because the customers we sell to, a lot of them are smaller municipalities that can't afford Esri. And even after spending the big ticket money for Esri, they don't understand it. And it's really complicated to get over that learning curve when all you've been in your whole life is just a municipal worker. You didn't go to college for this stuff. So we try to go straight forward with this desktop version, something easy, intuitive for the guy that's just doing locates and then an app that will sync up to it to do the things I want and keep the cost down. Our whole mapping service starts at just 360 bucks a year. And it does pretty much everything that Esri does and, and that we need it to do for utility purposes. And so the Subsurface Maps app, it can be downloaded on the Play Store as well. It's a free app. Um, it comes with your actual subscription of Subsurface um, Maps. And then it works pretty much the same way. You'll see you'll start the app here, but you'll notice some differences. Um, so when you start the app up, it gives you all your jobs that you're working on. You go find the job. You can create as many maps as you want. You go find the job that you want to work in, and then you can turn layers on and off, you know, so you don't have to view everything at once. Kind of cleans up your screen. And then you go ahead, and um, we have it paired up again with the geode, but you can use this again with the catalyst, an arrow, whatever you want. You can do RTK. And then <clears throat> we go ahead and tell it we want to locate a line. So we go into drawing a layer. And one thing that I wanted to emphasize here is I am having it do two layers at once. So I consulted with ProStar a long time ago, you know, with their Point Man app that, you know, they, they, they asked us several questions. And the one thing that always bugged me is, is I cannot do two layers at once. I want to be able to put my depth points in one layer and have it draw a line and put it in its own layer because they're two different things. Lines and points are two different things that need to be separated. And so when you're taking depths, just like this, hitting the survey serpent, it throws up the depth right there, automatically transfers it to straight inches on the screen. And then we have a place to put in all our other attributes, descriptions, and other drop down menus. It's completely customizable. And he locked it right there. So when he goes to take his next reading, now that description field will automatically input that power, you know, that he's on a power line. You can label it whatever you want. And there's other fields there are drop down fields. We have, a, you know, all the different types, just like Esri Collector would have. Uh, we kind of created exactly the same, but the main thing is the workflow. Just hitting a button on the locator will trigger, trigger a new form to pop up automatically, put in the depth reading where it needs to go, and then we have the capabilities of going ahead and adding all the other excess uh, stuff that we need to. So like here, he's getting to a transformer, even though he has this marked down as a telephone line, he's locating power here, but he has it as a transformer, he's going to mark it as a transformer. So he just changed the point layer. The transformer takes a line, it takes a point right over the top of the transformer and then uh, saves it. 
And so it, now he has that on a totally different layer and being able to move from one layer to the other as you're doing a locate is really important. You don't want to stop the line you're doing and, and, and then start it again because then you break your line. You know, that cable keeps on going. You want to keep the line going, but go to different points in between as you're doing it. So then he goes back to the main page, back to the maps here. And he'll hit sync. When you're done with doing what you need to do, the beauty of this whole app is it works offline too. So if you're in an area where you have no cell phone coverage, it caches everything in memory, puts it in there, and you can still work in a really remote area. Come back, hit sync. When you're back in a cell phone area, you can see it uploaded what he did. Now it's downloading whatever anybody else did. So like on a depth of cover job, when you have multiple guys or any kind of mapping job, when you have multiple guys working, they're all in sync. As long as they're hitting sync throughout the day, they can see what's been done, where everybody is. And, and, and the guy at the desktop, he can view it here. So here's a job here. The blue line represents where the gas line was according to the gas company. The yellow line is where we ended up mapping it. Of course, none of the services are normally mapped either, but they're all mapped now. So you can see they got everything on here um, actually representing where the meters are and all that. But here's our office. Here's what we just located and the video will clear up here in a second, hopefully. So you got the, uh, all your different attributes, all your lat your long, you got your GPS uncertainty levels, um, your, uh, what, how the depth units were, they're in inches, the date, the time, you actually have the technician's name on there, tagged on there so you know who did it, everything's saved on there. And then uh, you can also, there's the locator depth, and then you can also, I, I pre-recorded this so I don't have to do it as I'm talking. So I have to kind of, sometimes I talk faster than the actual dis display there. There's all your different layers on the left side over here. You can go into each one. You can tell exactly what it is. It will highlight on the map exactly what it is. Color code it, change it to whatever color you want. Change it to the thickness that you want. Change it to the, you know, if it's a dotted, a dashed line. So you can make your map, maps really beautiful as much as you want. And then here we got a 18-inch uh, reading on the gas service, but then it comes in here. You can see it says service there. And then it comes in here to a meter. And on the meter, he stopped and took a photo. So you got a nice photo option right there built into the app. You take a, a, a picture of the, the meter and you're done. And it's saved there forever. This is built on an Amazon web service and it's double redundant backed up every night. So it's really secure and uh, it's really fast really fast at updating and refreshing. So here's one of our customers that basically just, what, eight, nine months ago, he got started mapping out their whole town and they have multiple utilities in their town. And they, they had a fiber project going through town. So they got gas, water, communications, fiber, they got everything. And they were able to almost get the whole town done within six to eight months. Here's another one you can see on the map. They actually even uh, put down the flow. You can put down which way your water's flowing and your sewer's flowing. And here's one where he's doing one call tickets. And as he's doing the one call tickets, he's mapping it. And they've been not doing this for very long and they have got a lot of stuff done. So you can, they got a call for doing a new tree install here at this house. And he just took the locate out a little further and then uploaded it on the map. So you can see when you're doing your one call tickets, it can be done at the same time. Not everybody can do it, but a municipal guy that has a little bit of extra time on his hands, he can definitely do it. And it is a, definitely a benefit. But as you can see, going back to this original map, the, here we got a main line where it's supposed to be. And then where we actually located it, if you do a measurement here, you can see that this, this line is actually about 40 feet, 49 feet off. That makes a huge difference if a locator is going out there to do a locate and he thinks the, the line crosses the street and the neighbor's yard or down the street, two houses down. But even the main line here is in front of the sidewalk instead of behind the sidewalk, it's 10 and a half feet off. And so just maps in general, just being able to update them. And here you got the whole neighborhood pretty much done. All the meters are logged so they know exactly where they need to go. They even have it down where they're unlocatable. So this is an unlocatable service line, but right away, you know, the locator knows it. You know, there's no tracer wire, but you can see exactly where the meter is. So here's Hutchinson, Minnesota. So this is one of our pilot guys. And he took, a, he took one of our setups and he started using it. Brandon Fitzpatrick, I think is on the line, hopefully. But he can give you some feedback on what we found. Uh, but we did, um, he, he's got some beautiful maps going on, but he's always been using Tremble and they are a radio detection user, but I, I set him up with a, a geode and he started comparing the geode that we use to the R2 Tremble unit that they've been using. And I think one of the other Tremble units, but 
Here we got the yellow line on there um, showing where the bore was put in for a new line. There, the blue line is the geode that I gave them. And then here's the R2 that is more expensive, that is supposed to be more accurate, but it's, you can see the GPS uncertainty on the R2. I don't know if you catch that, but right there it says two foot GPS uncertainty. Here's the geode, which is 0.5 foot, half a foot certainty. And you can just tell by the way the line's sitting, it's a nice straight line, the geode is. And so the eyeball test, I always say the eyeball test is the best way to tell if you're accurate or not. You know, is it lining up to where it's supposed to be on the map? You can go off GPS and PDOT up uncertainty numbers and everything, but really the eyeball test is the, one of the best ways to go. So um, the, the uh, whole system can be easily shared as well. So you can, you can view everything you need to view. And then um, there's a share button up here on the top left you, all you have to do is put in that somebody's email address and they have 30 days access to view what you want them to view. So you, you get the screen looking how you want them to see it and you can easily share it. So for contractors, if they're digging in the area, you can easily share your map to them, but them full access to everything. You can you just show, you know, just want them to see what you want them to see. So you get it arranged on the map, but you got all your different layers there and everything. And so um, anyway, I'm gonna move on here and uh, I don't know how long I've been talking. Have you been keeping track, Steve? I think 20 minutes. I think it was 45. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, hey, Brandon Fitzpatrick, are you on the line? I know Dave Hunstead is, but Brandon, are you on? Yes, I am. You want to give I, won't, I won't worry about the time right now. Okay, thanks, Barb. Yeah. Brandon, are, are, do you, can you give any feedback on the uh, your maps? I don't. If you want me to pull up your map, I sure, sure can. But if you want to, they kind of saw an example of what I showed them there. No, I, I guess I would start out by saying, I mean, our stuff we're using Esri products, very expensive, but they do work very well. Um, I took everything from our GIS system, had it into subsurfaces, uh, we'll call it database, um, maybe an hour to export all my files into theirs. And then I probably played around with the map another hour or two. So it's not like you're starting over from scratch. I mean, you can take whatever you have, make a map of it, and now use subsurfaces stuff to improve that map. And then the accuracy between the different antennas, since you fooled with the different types of antennas um, a lot, I mean, what did you kind of find or determine, I guess? Okay, yep. So at, uh, at Hutch Tilly's, we have an R2, which is supposedly one foot accuracy. And we also have a uh, R10, which that'd be like one inch accuracy. So usually I'd shoot it with the R10, make sure I'm dead on. And then I shot it with the geoid and our uh, R2. The out in an open field, I would say you might get a little more accurate with the R2, but um, like uh, Travis was saying, the points were not a nice straight line. I mean, it just, it wasn't quite as smooth flowing as the uh, geoid. Um, when you got into heavy cover, I did a couple of alleys. The geoid was definitely, definitely outperformed the, uh, the R2. So, I mean, if you're gonna pay a bunch of money for an antenna, I don't know that you're gonna get more out of paying more for the Trimble universe, the geoid. Um, if you're out in an open field, yeah, you could get a little closer than than the geoid, but uh, the geoid, like I said, seemed to be a little more stable. I got a question for you on that geoid. I see it's attached down, you know, on the unit and not up on a pole. And so even with it down there, you're still you're still having that experience. Yeah, it obviously if you put it up on a pole like this here, it's you're going to get a little bit better accuracy, or it's going to retain its accuracy a little longer. But we're still getting great. You can see this guy has it mounted on his shoulder. They have a shoulder mount um, if you want to put it on a backpack. But I usually found that. I mean, the night the main thing is having consistency. So whether you do it on a pole or do it on the locator, to always have it consistently the same level off the ground. And the backpack really doesn't do that for you but a locator or a pole will. And then, um, because if you're going to eventually get a good vertical, um, which is, this is not meant to get a great vertical. You want to use engineering grade to get a great vertical, but, um, but if you uh, plan to do 3D mapping in the future, then you do need a consistent benchmark. So a, an antenna height of two foot, like the locator gives you, or an antenna height of six foot or seven foot, like the pole gives you. And, and canopy, I'm telling you, Damon, this thing works beautifully. It, when we get close to a house, our in canopy, those are the big two. You retain 
a, your straight line really well with the geo. I don't know what they're, Brent can probably explain what they're doing better than the others, but man, just using it in the field, we are able to, um, because we use the tremble units for a long time and we are able to not float with the geo. The geo just does not float like the tremble unit does. And Brandon can probably tell you that as well. I just don't know what it is, but man, it, for less than $2,000, that thing is, it does a beautiful job. And the fact that it's just, everything's retained in there that you got an internal battery that lasts 10 hours and you have a good blue, stable Bluetooth connection and it doesn't make it any easier. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, uh, yeah, Travis, Justin Litterman here. Yeah. Um, I, I was just curious, and I might have missed it. Uh, where where does this write to, uh, and and uh, and and can you change that? Can, say, can you write to your own database, or do you have to write to the cloud, or whatever? Can you go into that a little? Uh, bit? It writes to our database. It writes to okay. our, um, um, our our server basically, but you export as much as you want. So you can uh, um, you you can uh, through that. I'm trying to get through well, here. I mean, there's access ahead. to that. Either. You know, it's going to Amazon Web Services. And so it, right here, it's on subsurfacemax.com. Now, this is another one of these cloud environments with an API that can be integrated as well so that that can actually still be utilized within um, an API on another system. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, like Esri. Uh, yeah. So you could do an API onto Esri if you're already running Esri. But on the here, it's just you hit the export. And here's all your different types. You can go as a shape file, which of course you can go right to over to as race CSV. Um, you can export your attachments, any photos or videos you got. You, that's a nice thing too. If you're doing sewer inspections, you got a complete server to put it on. This is free. I mean, the, it, 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 you know, the, the, the amount of data going back and forth, we're not charging extra for it. So if you got a lot of photos, a lot of data, it, it, it's all the same cost. And then you have, of course, Google or KMZ, and uh, um, you can also uh, export different log sheets. So we have a work orders program on this too. So you can create a work orders layer if there was an, a, a damage investigation, and we're also gonna get ticket management maybe involved on this too. So you can do an API to, over to a ticket management server too. But uh, anyways, uh, the work orders is nice if you have a water leak, a gas leak, or a damage, you can create a work order, have a guy go investigate it, and then work through that work order out in the field. So you can bring obviously this web page up on any tablet or any phone, but then we have the app that works on on the phones, the Android phones, phones. So you don't have to be in cell phone coverage all the time. It will just cache all this information um, to what you need to work on, and then you you relay it back up. But it's all stored there. But it, you can stop. There is no there is no subscription that's locked in for a year or two years. You you can play by the month. You can do whatever you want. So guys that just need it for a month or two. That's fine. And we have a 30 day trial too. So, I mean, if you want to just try it, uh, in, it for 30 days and just play around and see what the capabilities are, I, I can set you up. I can set anybody up with that for free. Okay. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. No, oh, I am. I'm right here again. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the the last one that I have is, is uh, do, do you have to use that locator to um, uh, to enable the uh, application? I guess, or you know, does it? No, is that a? No. It's a standalone application too. So if all you want to do is go out and, and take points on you know hydrants, yeah, you can just use that by itself. Okay, yeah. well, it looks really really good. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. It's amazing, you know, the success we have. We've had a lot of customers on it now. And one thing that, I, that we're trying to integrate, and uh, I have a customer that is actually using this system for wind farm locating. So on a wind farm, you have some very high voltage cables. So you can power mode it out for the most part on a locator, but it gets to be really difficult when you have 15 HV cables, that, you know, over 15 KV cables um, that are within two foot of each other. Not all of them will power mode out the same, you know, some, especially ones that are a little deeper, they're hiding down there. What they'll do is though, is they use our app and they have the locator you know, with our, the phone mounted on the locator along with the geode. And as they're walking across the right of way, maybe somebody doing some terrace work or farmer doing tile work, they'll do their locate and just walk across on their, looking at their map at the same time they're doing their locate in power mode and either the, you know, 
they'll they'll pick it up on power mode, but if they don't, at least they have their map to fall back on. And so they'll be able to maybe locate seven out of the 15 or 10 out of the 15, but then they can at least put some paint marks down on the other ones and let the farmer know, you know, this is where the map, the GPS map is showing us, but at least we got some marks down there to have them all like accounted for. And it's, it's been great. It's really solved a lot of problems uh, in locating in those tight circumstances. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks guys. If you guys got any other questions, just feel free to contact me or Scott uh, there. Again, my telephone number has been up there long enough. Hopefully you've you got that down, <laughs> but, but th thanks for your time, guys.